Blessings, beloved. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life, and no man comes to the Father but through him. Something occurred to me today. <clears throat> that as human beings, we are <clears throat> simple creatures. That is in no way to diminish the creative marvels of God. It is to say, however, that there are creatures with greater dispensations of enablements than we. That by nature have more understandings, more appreciations. And we're at a disadvantage being born into this world in that those who have a greater dispensation, a relatively greater dispensation of enablements than human beings, use that advantage to further disadvantage human beings, such that it is perceived that those who have somewhat of an increase in enablements are those that one should go to, to be brought up in understanding, to be brought up in the world, to be elevated and escalated to something that is impressive to others. Yes, we are simple as human beings compared to our enemies. Compared to demons, human beings have less enablements. Even when the demons had physical bodies, because they were part angel, they had a greater dispensation of enablements. But no amount of enablements can make up for chaos in the parts. No amount. That's true for demons. That's true for human beings. That's true. It's true for fallen angels. It's true. When darkness enters into the person, it corrupts the person. So that no amount of enablements will make up for or retrain that which the darkness has corrupted. No amount of faculty, no amount of an ability to assess what has occurred in the defiling of the person can actually lead to the repair and reinstating of that person in perfection. Or, to use another word, in the light, in the Lord. Because the Lord God is perfect. You see, what Satan said to human beings was, in, I'm paraphrasing now, was that it wouldn't truly kill them, as God had said it would, to partake of the tree of knowledge and good of evil good and evil, specifically the fruit of the tree of, of the knowledge of good and evil. The knowledge of good and evil. So this is knowing both good and evil, whereas before that they only knew good. So now they knew good and evil, so they knew the difference between the two. But they had thereafter an awareness of evil, which made them aware that they were naked. Why? Because one who can have evil thoughts is aware of another having the ability to have evil thoughts. So do you see the divisive nature of knowing evil? Especially in a group of people. Because now people are saying, what, are they trying to trick me? I can see I'm naked. What do they think about my naked body? What if they're thinking negative things? What if they're thinking perverted things? What are they thinking? And now this awareness of evil makes that person self-conscious of the fact that they're naked. Well, they might be looking at the other and having thoughts they didn't priorly have prior to partaking of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and its fruit. 
by its fruit. Well, now they can see each other naked and they might be having thoughts that they didn't have before. So that they would look to themselves and say, oh, I'm naked. Do you understand? But prior to that moment, they had no consciousness of evil. They had no consciousness of darkness, of bad. So they didn't look to the other and think anything impure, and therefore they didn't think anything impure about the other seeing them. So the point I'm making is that knowing evil corrupts in all directions. It's a divisive force. And the enemy, your enemy, the enemy of your soul, Satan, knows this. Because he had already been corrupted by darkness by the time he offered uh, or encouraged Eve to partake of the tree, the tree of the fruit, or the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So he misrepresented. He was saying, you shall not surely die if you partake of that fruit. But it was the case where that, that they would, 